Welcome everybody, it is time to learn about triads, arpeggios, and how to build a guitar chord, or just in general, any chords. So, this is a very, very fun topic. Um, I know it's a bunch of nerd stuff that we've been doing. I know it is uh, quite challenging at the beginning to handle this stuff. Do not be discouraged if you are like, oh my god, this does not make sense. And um, do not be worried if you're like, I already know a lot of this stuff. Be like, you're too cool for this. Uh, no one's too cool for triads, I'm telling you right now. Uh, triads are your best friend. Uh, so well, there's lots of best friends when it comes to music theory, but the major scale triads, they're all buddies. Um, so they're all our best friends. So what we're going to tackle today is how to uh, look at triads, how to build arpeggios, and then ult and ultimately how to build a guitar chord. Uh, so typically... Um, we already, like everyone should understand a lot of the terms that we've been doing. And what we're going to be doing is using the major scale and how we can use that to create different sets of arpeggios and different sets of chords. So going straight back to our major scale, which we, uh, should all know very, very well and fondly, we're going to be doing the G major scale once again. So that's the, so starting on the E string, three, five, seven, and then we're going down to the A string, three, five, seven, and then we've got the four, and then and then we got the five again. So there's notes that, that we're going, so I want you to start practicing some letter names now, mess around with it. So we've got the, uh, we've got the G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Now, if you're wondering why I'm very hesitant when it comes to letter names, uh, I only use letter names like low key secret as a um as just kind of like a rough guide of where I am on the fretboard but if I ever am ever looking at the fretboard I'm thinking it as numbers when it comes to scales so I'm saying like this is the root note or one first note second note third fourth fifth five six seven oh, sorry one two three four five six seven one that's how I look at it um so I look at the relationships between numbers and where they are sitting uh, that helps me out a lot better so I can play through every single key without it, without a hassle. But that's more of an intermediate advanced thing that we'll go down later on um, in how you guys can approach your scales and improvising. So when it comes to triads, we got our major scale. And now what we're going to do is we're going to play an interval of a third, depending on the major scale, like where you are on the major scale. The interval will change between either a major third or a minor third. So a minor third is uh, three frets. So one, two, three. And then a major third is going to be four frets. One, two, three, four. Um, so right now, I start on this first note. It's a G. I play the first third up is going to go straight to this note here. And then I play the next third. So basically, you're just skipping a note in the scale. So I play one note, skip a note, play the next note, skip a note, and then bam. You're just walking through the scale like that. And that starts creating an arpeggio. The last note, we're not going to do um, what we would call a seventh chord, uh, but we would just jump right to the octave at that point. So one note, skip a note, one note, skip a note, bam. And then that creates a triad. Now that triad I just played is going to be a one, third, fifth, root third, fifth. So, or a one, three, five. Um, and that is what we call a major interval uh, or a major tri uh, arpeggio, major triad. Now, if I was going to not be playing in the G major scale, but just for just so you know the difference in sound, this is not part of the G major scale right now. Um, say I were to play a root flat three, which is that minor third, five. So I'm flattening the third. That creates a minor, uh, minor triad, and you're about to hear a bunch of them soon. So that's a minor triad. Now, that's all that happens in arpeggios. Arpeggios are you just playing through the scale, skipping where it needs to be skipped, and then that is creating uh, these chords or these arpeggio sounds that you're going for. Uh, and then, oops, I did the seven, my bad. I'm, I don't practice arpeggios often. I only need to know them so that I know what they do. Um, so if you're practicing arpeggios, don't be stressed. We 
we don't need to be the gods of arpeggios. We just need to know how they can serve our music and just understanding of the theory behind them is going to be amazing. So root, third, fifth, and then root again. Third, fifth, root. Boom. So that's me playing through G major arpeggio. Now, you know how I was talking about uh, the minor arpeggio? So the thing that's going to happen here, which is going to be in the next video that we talk about, because it's going to be a lot more information on diatonic chords, but depending on where you start on the major scale, if you follow the system of play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, and that's what we call like moving in intervals of thirds or what we call stacking triads, um, you will be able to build different, like different characteristic chords. So if I do it here, I will build a G major chord. Now, if I start on the second note and I keep following the G major scale, remember this is following the G major scale. Now I'm not moving to A major. I keep following the G major scale. So I play this note, skip one, play this note, skip one. I create an A minor triad. Now I play this one, start on the third, skip one, and then skip one. I create uh, a B minor triad. So you can hear how these triads are starting to map out a lot of what we hear. And that, um, that is like creating harmony for us. And that's what the diatonic chords we're going to talk in the next video is all about. Now, that's all the triad stuff I want you to do. Very beginner triad. So if you ever hear me like, oh, yeah, a major triad, just remember it's one, three, five. So it's going to sound like that. And then if you hear a minor triad, it's going to be one flat, three, five. So or look like that. Um, they will all look different. The thing with a guitar is where you are on the fretboard, what tone you're after on the fretboard, these shapes will change all the time. I could play a major triad like this. Or I could play it like this. You see how there's two different, whole different shapes there? Um, or if that major triad could be like. So these shapes will change, but the, the theory behind it will never change. It'll always be root, third, fifth. Now, the part where this is going to get a little bit dicey is when we go to build chords. Now, chords are simply taking the root, third, and the fifth these are what we call like triad bass chords. Um, they're going to be the root, third, and fifth. And what we're going to do is on the guitar, it's quite challenging to be like, okay. You don't want to be playing every chord like that. It's quite annoying. Um, but what we do on the guitar is what we can do is stack them vertically and allow us to get like a full range of sound. So this is not something that you're going to have to nail right away. You just need to understand it's happening because otherwise it will be quite confusing for you at the beginning. Uh, it's quite tricky at the beginning to be like, all right, I can do this all. It's like, no, you can't. It takes a while to really understand this, but it's going to break down the theory behind these chords that you do happen to learn. So if I play a G note, my next G notes, say I'm playing an open G chord, right? Uh, I got this G note here and I got another G note here and I got another G note here. So you can hear how there's different octaves. Now my next, the next note is the third. So it's gonna be over here, which will be the B. Now my other B note is here. And then the last note that I gotta get is a D note, which is the open fourth string. So I got G, 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 B, B, and then a D. And that's using all six strings. And then if I strum them all, I have a chord. So I'm using combinations of these to create the chord. Now, this can you can do this any way you want. So right now, where's my G notes? G, G, G. Where's my B notes? B. And where's my D? G chord. I do the same thing over here. Where's my G notes? I got a G and I got a G. And now where is my B, 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 and where's my D? Now I've got a, another G chord. So I'm basically just taking the triad that I have, which is the one, three, five, the G, B, D, and then I am just building chords that way. 
Now you can do this for every single chord that you play. And I would encourage you, um, which is gonna be the intermediate stuff that we go into, we will start really isolating and building your knowledge to be super fast at figuring out where the root is, where the third is, and where the fifth is. Um, it's gonna make you an absolute savage when you're playing through the fretboard. Um, this is part of the fretboard knowledge. This is part of getting your level as an intermediate guitarist a lot better. Um, but that's essentially all that's happening here. Triads and arpeggios are the building blocks of getting you to chords. And then chords is gonna help you get to the level where you really understand how to improvise over it. You understand how to songwrite. You'll understand how to do a bunch of really, really cool things. And you'll understand what's actually happening when you play a G chord. I don't think many of you have actually had the chance to be like, what actually is happening in the G chord? Now you know why you're playing a G major scale and then you're playing three notes out of it. And now you just pick out those three notes and then you stack them on top of each other. And you get a G chord. And that is pretty much the, as much as it, I played it quite quickly just then, that's the steps of how to build chords and arpeggios. Um, and that's why it's simple, completely simple. Like there's no, no doubt about it. This is very easy and very simple, but to get this grasp on it, and obviously there's quite a lot of chords to get the hang of, um, it's quite hard to put it into practice. So easy concept, hard to do. Uh, but, you know, it wouldn't be worth it if you didn't put in a little bit of effort, a little blood, sweat, and tears. But hopefully that helps you. And um, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys working on some diatonic chords. And this is like, the, ne the next video is pretty much my favorite video. Uh, it's what, second favorite, I will, I'll lie. It's the second favorite. It's the precursor to my favorite, uh, which you guys will see soon. So uh, have fun and uh, I can't wait to see you guys absolutely killing it. So stay safe and let's jam in the next video.